All right, folks, it's that time again. It's time for the video. It's Friday, the week has escaped for me, but I thought, you know what, I need to make good on my goal and my promise to you guys that I'm gonna do these videos more often, try and get them out once a week. So here's a Friday video. And we're talking about something that's super important, guys. Very important. If you don't know this, you should be listening very, very closely, taking notes, whatever you need to do, because this is super important. We're talking about how to calculate the draw and stress you're putting on the circuits you're using when you're lighting things. Now the math that goes into this is a little more complex than what we're talking about today, but this is gonna be just good enough to keep us safe on set without us burning things down or getting fired or making people mad, et cetera, et cetera. Because a lot of things could happen if you overload these circuits on set. You could either start a fire, you can uh, trip breakers, you can ruin generators, which stops production and makes people who are paying you very, very mad. Or yourself, because if you're doing it for yourself, you're paying yourself, right? Anyway, so basically what I'm talking about is we want to be careful about what, how much of a load we're putting on the circuits we're working with. And when I say circuit, I'm talking about, in our case, basically a wall plug. Just an Edison plug that we have on the wall at our apartment or the office or whatever that we're going to be plugging our lights into. Each one of these circuits, one of these circuits, is, can take a 20 amp draw max. So, you know, you, there's the stories of, oh, I was... Uh, running the toaster and my sister had her hair dryer plugged in and all of a sudden it, it blew the breaker. Well that exceeded the 20 amp max uh, draw on that circuit and it tripped the breaker. Back in the day it was fuses and you'd burn a fuse out to replace a fuse. Now the breaker just measures it and knows that it's going to be overloading the wiring for the house and so it'll trip the breaker and turn it off. So we're working with 20 amps max. Okay great, I have 20 amps to work with. What does that mean when it comes to these lamps that I'm used to use, seeing are using it in watts. Now, the other cool thing is nowadays, the watts are pretty minimal compared to what we're used to using back in the day. Um, some popular wattages are 500 watts for all the white the work lamps, 650 watts for the Aries 650s, which are popular lamps. The Mole Richardson Tweenies, I love those, they're 650 watts. Um, 1,000 watts, or a 1K is very popular. 2K, 2,000 watts, that's the biggest you're gonna go on these kind of regular plug-in Edison circuits. Uh, you need some other special hardware and other circuits that will give you more than 20 amps or anything bigger than the 200 watt, more or less on these circuits, at least what we're concerned with today. Um, nowadays though, we're working with LEDs, which draw hardly anything. We have complex fluorescents that draw a very, very small amount compared to their, uh, their halogen counterparts or their HMI counterparts, which is pretty cool. But all the same principles apply. If you have your light, which is measured in watts, and this is a, a measure of one joule per second, uh, of energy used up. Um, this is developed by Dr. James Watt, who was uh, a scientist like in the 1800s or some time of that nature. I don't know, 1900s, whenever electricity was invented, right? Um, so you have your watts, and that's what the light's measured in. The draw that the light has on the circuit is measured in amps, and our circuit is supplying us volts. So all three of these things go together to figure out, okay, what our draw is. And the equation for this is amps is equal to your watts divided by your volts. Well, the watts are easy. That's just whatever the lamp's rated at. The volts, that's also easy because we just know we're working with 100 volt, 120 volts because that's what all of your regular American household and you know, regular AC electricity is coming in at is 120 volts. Now you could have higher, you can have a two, uh, 240 volt, but that's special cases in special in big warehouses where they have welders and things plugged in like that. Generators can give you two, uh, 240, but we're not worrying ourselves with that. 240 is basically 120, two 120s put together to so you can have uh, greater voltage and things like that to work with. But we're just going to stick with the 120 because that's what we know what we're going to be working with. So we have our watts divided by our volts, and that gives us our amps. And you take each one of these lights, you run it through the equation, and you add up the amps to 20, and you know that's as much as you can put on that circuit. So let's really quick, let's run our classic 500 watt through that equation. So 500 watts um, divided by 120 volts, and that gives us what, like four, I believe, 4.16 amps. So how many um, 500 watt lamps can I put on a household regular Edison 20 amp circuit? Well, safely, I want to say you can almost put five. Let's stick with four because four is going to give us 16 point something or other. I can safely run four of these 500 watt lamps on one circuit. If I had to, if I had to run 
a lot more than four 500 watt lamps. Let's say I had a really big party going on. I was lighting the backyard and the front yard and everything else in the middle of the night. I'd have to go find a second 20 amp circuit. And that's easy enough to do if you have some extension cords or stingers. You just run it out to the one, one leg out to the garage, bring it to where you're shooting, and you run one out to the kitchen, bring it where you're shooting, because you know houses know that you have a lot of appliances to plug in, so they're gonna spread things out. Same thing goes with apartment buildings. A lot of each apartment, I don't know for certain, but I would guess that each apartment had either one or a few of its own circuits. Very rarely would it be shared by code, I'm sure, nowadays. So you really wanna just kind of, if you, if you it's a question of how many, if you're gonna max a circuit out, you wanna go find another circuit. And uh, we know that each circuit's 20 amps. All right, let's jump for inches of time all the way. We had somebody on one of the videos talking about they had a two, uh, 2K that they were running and they wanted to know, okay, what's, what's the best way to run this 2K? Well, I'm just gonna say, um, let's look at our 2K and say, okay, so let's run it through how many amps are we using up? Uh, so we have our watts divided by 120, and that gives us, I think it gives us, let's see, 16.5. Uh, so 2K is basically gonna take up 16 amps. That's almost a whole circuit. You can run something very small in addition to that on the same circuit and be okay. But usually we'll just run the one 2K off of something like that, especially if you're going any kind of distribution through extensions, because usually extension cords aren't rated for 20 amps, so, and the plugs definitely aren't, so you wanna make sure that you're being careful of that. Now I'm gonna give you a little, um, a little rule of thumb here that's also gonna be a safety tip. So now you know the, the math that involves with it. What we do as electricians is we take that 120 volts and we just knock it down to 100 volts. Now why do we do this? A couple reasons. First off, it's easier math in your head. If you have a whole slew of lights that are plugged into that circuit and you're like, okay, how much am I actually drawing? You just add up all the watts, divide it by 100, move it to the decimal two places, boom, you're done. So all of a sudden our 200 watt turns into, or sorry, our 2000 watt turns into 20 amps. Our uh, 1K turns into 10 amps, 650 turns into 6.5 amps, 500 watt turns into five amps. That's much easier math. So now we go, okay, how many of these 500 watt lamps can I plug into a 20 amp circuit if I'm using 100 volts instead of 120? Well, that means I can plug in four of them. There's a little bit extra play, but in my head, I know that that's kind of a buffer, so I know that if there's any kind of error being involved, that if somebody runs and plugs something in on a run that I'm not aware of, it's not gonna blow everything up. So this 200 watt, this 2K, sorry, 2000 watt, this 2K is actually drawing 16.5 amps, but there's a little bit of headroom in there so that if either for two reasons, like I said, for safety, so that you know that you have a buffer, or if you're maxing out your circuits and you go, oh, I really could use one more light, you can get down and dirty with 120 volts, figure out exactly how much your draw is, and find out how many amps you actually have to work with at the end of the day. But, I hope I haven't been too confusing. Let's just to recap and, and to uh, think and to really talk, talk about the most important stuff. The equation, of course, is amps equals watts divided by volts. So, oh, you can barely see that. Amps, just think 20 amp circuit, watts, whatever the lamp is rated at, right? Volts, use 100 volts, and you'll be awesome. So there you go, any other questions, thoughts, comments, rate it, all that stuff, you know? Love to hear back from you guys. I'm sure we'll have some good discussion on this one. Have a good day.